Hey everybody, so welcome back. So today we have a product review for the uh, Sentech Professional Series Code Scanner with live data. Uh, the part number on this one is 60694. Picked it up for, uh, from Harbor Freight for um, a little over $79. Um, I had a coupon for 25% off. The original asking price from Harbor Freight is $99. But again, with anything from Harbor Freight, if you have a coupon, you can get it for significantly, significantly less. So this came out to about $80 with tax, all right? So essentially, it's it's a uh, it's a pretty easy to use unit. Um, I, right now, we're plugged into a 2013 Chevy Cruze um, with a 1.4 turbo. It's an eco, it's an automatic. So we'll go through some of the, uh, the basic um, features of this tool. I actually just used this to troubleshoot a misfiring condition on this car, but uh, we'll go into some of the uh, the features of this tool so it, um, so you can be familiar with what it does. So across the front, you have OBD2, EOBD, ready to test, DT, uh, diagnostic trouble code lookup, review data, print data, set up and about. And then you have a button down here called IM. So what's nice about this tool is if you just hit the IM data what it's button, what it's going to do is going to communicate with the car, and it's essentially it's going to give a system readiness check as far as all the uh, the um, systems on the car. And uh, right now, because the car isn't running, um, just because I want to record this without that much background noise, um, we're getting a EVAP um, not ready, but that's fine. So, because the car isn't running. So to get back, we're just gonna hit escape. And so with that, with DTC lookup, what you can do is if you have a code, what you can do is you can serve, you can scroll left, right, and then you can uh, input some data into it and hit okay, find a code, and basically it'll tell you what it is. So, so that's a nice feature um, to look up a code for somebody. Um, so we'll hit escape again, hit escape again, and what we're going to do is we'll go into OBD2 because uh, for the most part that's what everybody's going to be in. We're going to go into that. It's going to communicate with the vehicle. All right, so right off the bat, it gives a uh, if there's no conditions present, if there's no issues. It's going to give you a green check mark. So on this particular car, what it can do is it can read th three of its modules uh, on the car. Um, basically, we're going to be uh, looking at the first one because it gives you the most data. Hit OK. And you can, so right at the bat, you can read codes. Right now, there's no co codes in this car. Reading codes, no st stored codes. Hit Escape. Go to Pending Codes. No stored codes. All right. Permanent codes, if there were some, there are no codes, right? That's why we have that green check mark. So now if you want if you want to go to race codes, obviously that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, we'll go into live data last. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to onboard monitor test. Because this is actually quite handy. So with onboard monitor test, it can actually look at a lot of independent data on it. Oh, you know what? We're in the wrong module. So let's do this. EB. You know what, guys? The car may need to be running for this, so I do apologize. Oh, there we go. So we're in the wrong module. So we're going to go down to Chevrolet. All right, so what's nice about this, it can tell you uh, the, uh, you can go, you can actually drill down into some of the uh, the sensors that are on here and actually look at diagnostic information. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go into the one that I was just using because that's the one I'm familiar with, is misfire cylinder uh, uh, data information. And honestly, this is a four cylinder. So if you had a six or an eight or whatever it is, it would read to all the, the cylinders. So what we can do is we can go down to cylinder number one or whatever, which one that you think that you maybe have an issue with, you, you drill down into it 
and it will actually tell you the miss how many misfires that that cylinder has had. Right now, this one has had zero, and we'll go to another two. Hit OK. So this one has had two misfires in the last driving cycle. Um, I think that's somewhat normal because I just was going through a diagnostic one on cylinder number four and that one had up to uh, 800 misfires. And that's essentially why I bought this tool. Um, so what it is, the min is zero, the max is 65,000. So what happened is if you're driving the car and it detects a misfire, it's basically going to if it falls in that range, it's going to log it. So right now it had two misfires in the course of over 50 miles that I drove this on the last test cycle. So I think it, that's somewhat normal because so, the rest of the cylinders, after I changed the, uh, the plugs, they're all zero. So. so that's the onboard monitor test. So if you want, you can look at the, uh, the O2 sensor for uh, heating. I'll tell you what the... Um, the diagnostic on that current status. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go back. We're gonna go to, to live data. And this is actually pretty handy as well. And again, because the car isn't running, some of the stuff isn't gonna be displaying, but it's because you know we wanna keep the noise down to a minimum. So we're gonna go to view data. And we're going to go to complete data set. If you want to do a custom data set, you can filter stuff out. But for, just for the, the, say, the, the uh, sake of demonstration, we're going to go show you everything. And this is all depending on the car. Um, depending on how the ECM is set up on the car, you may get more data, more data out of it or you may get less. Um, so DTC, that's dy uh, dynamic uh, um, trouble code count. Right now it's zero. Fuel system one, fuel system two, load percentage, um, engine cooling temperature. Right now the car is not running, it's 203 and, and, and uh, dropping. Not sure where some of these are. Um, PSI, uh, mass airflow, PSI, RPM is zero. Vehicle sensor speed, that's the tells you how fast the car is going, spark advanced. Intake air temperature in Fahrenheit, that's 149 degrees. Mass airflow in pounds, that's right now at 0.0 because .0 the car is running. Throw position percentage is 28.6. Again, I have no idea what that means, or if it's normal or what. And then you have oxygen sensor locations and uh, bank one, sensor one, uh, voltage, uh, sense, uh, oxygen two, bank one, sensor two, voltage. Um, basically, those are the, the sensors before and after the cat. Um, Runtime, how long the, the car has actually been running. Uh, miles, distance, traveled and miles from the last time a trouble code was set. Uh, Warm-ups, um, how many times the car has had warm-up cycles and the last time the, uh, the, uh, the uh, codes have been reset. How many miles it's traveled? Not sure what that means, but it has something to do with the evaporative. Barometric pressure, cat temperature. So right now the car is not running and the cat is still uh, registering a little bit under 500 degrees. Um, load, not sure what that is. Uh, ambient air temperature, 64 degrees. Essentially that's telling you what the temperature is um, underneath the hood. Um, I believe. I don't think that's I, I don't think that's quite accurate. I think it's just the temperature uh, in the garage right now. It's 64 degrees. Uh, not sure what that is. Sorry guys, I didn't read the manual on this. So, um, but all these codes are in the, in the uh, the manual. Intake air uh, air in, intake ambient temperature number one in Fahrenheit. Uh, 149, 141, 149. There's three sensors on that. And that's that's the bottom of the list. And right now it goes back to the top of the list. Um, one thing I was hoping uh, it would pick up would be the temperature 
for the transmission fluid. Unfortunately, with the this particular ECM, it doesn't report it back, or this particular scanner, it doesn't have the ability to read it. So that would be handy to have. Um, it doesn't list oil temperature either, or um, oil pressure, or anything like that. Not that I can find. It may be listed under a different module. Um, but again, I haven't spent that much time looking at the manual or looking at the abbreviations in the acronyms that some of, some of, what some of them mean. So essentially, this is just a crash course on this tool. But uh, for what I'm going to use it for, um, it's already uh, paid for itself um, for diagnosing the misfire uh, I had on this car. Um, I would recommend it. Um, it's, it's a little bit better than the uh, the basic code scanners that just basically just read codes. Um, this one actually will give you a little bit more information as far as uh, tracking and a little bit more diagnostic work. So, and there's some other stuff in here that I haven't gotten into, like uh, freeze frames, component tests. I'm not sure what that does. It always comes back that it can't read it, so I'm not sure what that is. And then vehicle info, if you want to read the... Uh, the VIN. I'll tell you what the VIN is. Modules present. I'll tell you what they are. It doesn't really give you a description of what they are. One thing I have noticed is um, the order of the uh, the modules doesn't say current, they're, whether in alphabetical or numerical order. Um, they don't stay in the same order when you turn it on, so and they all look very similar. Alright, let's see if you can get the back of the focus. Okay. Alright, essentially that's it. So guys, if you have any questions regarding this tool, go ahead and drop them in the comments box. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you like what you saw, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Um, if you like the video, Please uh, subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you as part of my community. Um, if there's any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them in the comments box. And as always, have a great day, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.